Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology Programming Language and Design Concept Modules Online Presentation Series Programming Language Principles First of all, let me introduce my group members to you. IDT Prabash, PWGD Shaminder, TN Mara Sekara, NS Hetiarachige, and EMPS Adrisingha. Now, I am going to give you a brief introduction on what we are going to present you today. First, what is a programming language? Programming language is a language that is intended for the expression of computer programs and that is capable of expressing any computer program. So, why we need to learn them? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Here we have listed some of them. To understand the most important facilities found in modern languages, appreciate the benefits as well as costs from their implementation, increase your programming knowledge so that techniques can be used in languages that may not support them, and see more structural similarities between languages. Actually, our presentation is about programming language principles, but first it is important to know what is a programming language. So, next we'll have a look at what are the principles. Principles are near universal truth in software engineering. The origins of the principle are uncertain and it has been reinvented a number of times with slight variations. So, this picture describes a situation which we don't have any principle. As we all can see in this picture, no one will be able to prove anything without these principles. So, that is the importance of a principle. So, next we will look at what are the programming language principles. Programming language principles are the concepts we should follow when we design a programming language. And, here is a little tip for you. In order to understand the principles, you need to know more than one programming language or one style of programming. So, next we will look at why we need to learn those language principles. Here we have listed some of the reasons. First one, increase the capacity of thinking. As we all know, structure of the language defines the boundaries of thought. This is very important if you are trying to implement our own programming language. The more we have knowledge about these principles, the better we can implement a good and quality programming language. The next one, improved background for choosing appropriate languages. When we selecting a language to design our application program, it is important to know about these principles. For example, we need to develop an application program which should be portable. Thus, it is better to go for a language like Java. If we take a language like Fortran, it violates portability principle, so it is not good. Next one, increase the ability to learn new languages. As we all know, it is not enough to learn about one particular language nowadays. And if we need to learn new languages, it is a must to learn the basic concepts and principles. Next one, Compare and contrast between several languages. We can compare and contrast between the structures and features of different languages if we know those principles. And for the evaluation of languages, it is important to learn those language principles. For example, if we take Fortran, it violates structured programming principle, which means its readability is low. Those are the few reasons we have listed. Now, let's have a look at what we are going to present today. In this presentation, we basically focus on 11 programming language principles. Those are Synthetic Consistency Principle, Abstraction Principle, The Automation Principle, Regularity Principle, Orthogonality Principle, Portability Principle, Zero One Infinity Principle, the Structure Principle, Defense in Depth Principle, The Impossible Error Principle, Preservation of Information principle. Now, we'll explain each of this principle in detail. Okay, 
I think now we have good knowledge about these principles. Why we have those principles? What are, what kind of principles we have to learn? And what are the history of principles? Okay, now I'm going to introduce each principles in details. The first principle: syntax consists of principles. What is the syntax consists of principles? The definitions of syntax consists of principles says things which look similar should be similar. Things which look different should be different. Okay, I give you a natural example to understand this definition. A good uh, natural example is apple and pineapple. If you take one apple and you get eat, you can get some tasty. And same thing, if you get another apple, the same object, um, you can get same tasty because they are similar fruits. But if you take a pineapple, pineapple is a totally different fruit than the apple. Color is different, shapes is different, everything is different. Therefore, you can get the different, totally different uh, taste from the pineapple than the apple. Therefore, we use apple and pineapple, different name. But if you use apple and apple for the different fruits, you get really confused. You can difficult to understand. You can difficult to remember also. Therefore. Uh, you get the same thing is happening in the syntax consistent principles. I give you one uh, example. Uh, go to statement in Fortran. This is a programming example that violate these uh, principles. Uh, there is a three type of go to statement in the Fortran. If you check uh, computed go to and assigned go to, the looks are similar, but their functionality is totally different in this computed go to and assigned go to. The purpose of the computed go to and assigned go to are totally different, but they use the same name go to and go to here and same parentheses in different places so difficult to understand because they, they use the same name but the functionality is different so therefore we say go to statements in Fortran violate these principles okay I give another example too. And the example of the mathematical multiplication and power in Fortran also violate these principles because of if you check this one this, uh, this symbols is used to multiply two numbers but the two types when you use the this same, same symbols uh, you use to uh, get the power of same value but it's get really confused it's not a good thing it is violating these principles but if you check this one to to multiply these two values it uses a different uh, symbols and uh, get the power it uses a totally different uh, the symbols. Therefore, easy to remember, easy to understand, or programming user is a good concept in programming. Therefore, we say some uh, use of program uh, violate this principle, syntax consistent principles. If you use uh, if the principle says things which similar look similar should be similar, and things which different should be different. Okay, this is the main thing that you have to know about this principle. And not only, uh, if, if I give you one, like another example, um, that not violating. This is a good example, not violating. If you check for and while loop in the Java and C++, they say the totally different functionality is different inside the for and while. Therefore, they use a different name, while and for. Therefore, this uh, this uh, statement, this for and while, are not violating these principles because things are not similar. Therefore, they use different names. That is why I said some concepts, some programming examples, are violating this syntax consistent principle. But some concepts are not violating. The good thing, this is a good concept. If if you cannot violate these principles, the programmer can program or user can easy to remember code, easy to read uh, the Codes. Okay, this is the end of these principles. I can go to the next principle in the next steps. Okay, our next principles defense in depth principles. What is defense in depth principles? The de this definition of this principle is says if an error gets through by one line of defense, then it should be caught by the next line of de defense. And it says uh, if you get an error when you type checking or syntax checking, and it should be catch that error at the first stage. And the, if the program is unable to catch that errors at the first stage, then it gives us a lot of well. Errors, it may be a big problem for the programs because um, it, it uh, increases the cost for the maintain and uh, and reduce the quality of the production if you wait to catch the, that error uh, and catch the error. Okay, um, next I going to I'm going to show you a one practical example to understand this definition. Okay. Um,
this is a practical example thing these are the different kind of barriers like uh, think uh, this is the syntax checking and this is the type checking this kind of barriers and these are the concept or mechanism to identify these errors and thief uh, thief is like uh, bugs or errors uh, this kind of things and think when the thief is come to get that gems and the program should be able to catch that error if it's error the the good program should be catch that error at the first stage it's a good program means and it not violate these principles and and this is a good concept or if sometimes unable to catch that error at the first stage but and the next level of defense that should be able to catch that errors be, uh, and it also is a good concept but it and uh, the good the better one is it should be captured at the first stage but, but if sometimes you fail to catch the first stage then the next defense should be able to catch that errors okay and sometimes uh, error error may be unable to catch at the first stage or any stage then this thief or error is going to this thief. medium is like this bug is exist forever that just means the reduce the cost of the it reduce the quality of the productions and and it violated these principles and this is a one of practical example to understand this definition okay next I am going to show you a um, programming example it's like ignoring white space in the photon because of photon is ignore um, the white space in the um, the program concepts like uh, think this is a do loop in the Fortran. Uh, you can this is a uh, actual method to define the uh, do loop in Fortran. But uh, if you type like this with by ignoring the white space, this is also correct because it's not considered about the uh, it's white space. And these are the tokens. Okay, the, the tokens are in the correct place. Therefore, uh, compiler thing this is the correct one. But uh, the bad thing of this method is uh, thing if you was unable to put this comma at the correct place like if you put a dot comma at the, this place and the compiler thing this is uh, as a uh, assignment of two value to a variable because the thing this is as a variable and this is assignment of values and uh, and the compiler thing that this is not a, a loop so this is a, not a good thing because the reason is the compiler was unable to check that this is an error the, uh, error and therefore uh, this concept this steps is valid um, uh, this principles this principles okay mm. okay and think uh, C sharp command like this one and you type uh, initial value variable and this this consider as a correct uh, value assignment but if you type uh, in mistake the c sharp the type checking are available in the c sharp and it consider that this is an invalid uh, input uh, invalid keyword therefore it's given errors uh, this is not a correct uh, assignment of a value uh, and this is a good programming concept therefore it's not violating these principles therefore uh, the final we can conclude that these principles uh, defense in depth principle is uh, if an error is uh, find out in the, any place of the calls it should be catch at the first stage okay next i'm going to jump to the next principles and we will discuss about this more